All right, so here we have a 100-year-old short story. It might be easy, it might be hard, no way to know until we get into it, uh, but make sure you read the question first. Based on the text, how do people in the capital of Mexico most likely regard uh, this Dr. Mal Sofrido? So what do other people think of him, right? Now, that, that's, a, that's a specific thing. I might, they might say what he thinks of himself or what he thinks of the other people. I don't care about that. What do the people think of him? Uh, okay, it's from this short story. It is a saying in the capital of Mexico that Dr. Mal Sufrido carries more family secrets under his hat than any archbishop. Okay, so if it's a saying, then that he's secretive, that seems like what other people would think of him, right? The doctor's hat is appropriately enough uncommonly capacious, meaning uh, wide, I guess, or, or big, uh, rising very high and sinking so low that it seems to be supported by his ears and eyebrows and has a furry look as if it had been brushed the wrong way, which is perhaps what happens to it if it is ever brushed at all. When the doctor takes it off, the family secrets do not fly out like a flock of parrots, uh, but remain nicely bottled up beneath a dome of old and highly polished ivory. Honestly, I think the first part is kind of answering the question, right? They think he's maybe secretive um, or that he just like knows a lot of things about people. So let's see what the answer choices are. A, many have come to tolerate him despite his disheveled appearance. No, I know they do talk about the disheveled appearance, but the, the, the we're not saying that like, oh, well, he's he's got this rumpled hat, uh, but we're going to forgive him for it. Like they're just kind of describing him in this middle chunk, which is mostly about how he looks, we don't really actually get the the people's opinion, right? What do the people think of how he looks? We're, we're never actually getting that. So this is important, you know, to make sure we focus on the specific thing the question wants. B, uh, few feel concerned that he will divulge their confidences. Confidences would be secrets. Uh, and divulge means to kind of give up, to reveal. Uh, so they're not worried about it? Okay. Um, it is a saying in the capital of Mexico that Dr. Mal Sufrido carries more family secrets under his hat than any archbishop, so he has a lot of secrets. And at the end there, um, when the doctor takes off his hat, the family secrets do not fly out like a flock of parrots, but remain nicely bottled up. So, okay, I kind of kind of get it. Um, I don't love that it's quantifying it, but certainly it's about secrets. It's about him not telling people. Okay, let's look at C. Some dislike how freely he discusses his own family. Well, they don't talk about his own family at all. They talk about other people's families is my assumption because uh, he's the doctor. But uh, he also doesn't discuss anything. That's the whole point. At the end, it says that they're not being discussed. They're they're staying in his head. D, most would be unimpressed by him were it not for his professional expertise. I, I don't know that, right? I don't know if they're impressed or not. That doesn't seem to come up at all. Um, and they certainly don't say, well, you know, if he's not a doctor then, or archbishop, then I don't, I don't care. Um, so I, I guess it's B mostly nothing else makes sense. Uh, notice though, that all of these choices actually start with a quantifier word, which is interesting. Um, I don't, and that's the thing with B's. I don't love that. It says few, I, I, I don't really quantify it in the passage in any way that I can tell. Uh, so I don't love it. But this is just, you know, there's only four answers. So sometimes, you know, we have to kind of deal with a word that in other cases might make us very suspicious. I was still right to be suspicious of that word, but there's something else that could be right here. And that's a reminder that when we think about the trap answer categories and certain words that tend to show up in trap answers, there is no word that is a definitive, always cross it out word. It always depends on the context because sometimes the passage just proves the word right and it, it allows us, it justifies the use of a word that otherwise is a big problem. Or sometimes more like this, where it's like, well, I, I don't really feel like I have a justification for the word other than I, I the other choices are wrong. And I have to pick something. So one of the main strategies to the reading always is that we don't want to worry about writing our own version of the, the answer, right? We don't want to come up with a detailed main idea, a detailed summary, whatever, because it's very unlikely that the SAT is going to give us this kind of perfect summary that we're looking for. So we always have to deal with compromises uh, with this kind of stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. I, I don't think it's a hard question, but it just I think some of you might cross out B because you've seen that word few as a problem, but it's the only one that makes sense. We, we have no choice. We got to pick it.